Ah, right then, welcome back to another video. Today, we're down on the coast. So it's no surprise at this point, it's the end of June, we've had a very, very warm spring, and that, to some extent, has put the trout fish into bed for me. I've been focusing the last six weeks, probably on the bass, and I've had some pretty good bass fishing. So, I've kept the bass for the table. I wanted to make a seafood risotto, but I wanted to add something to it. Some shellfish, some prawns, but rather than go out and buy one, I thought let's come down to the coast and do some foraging ourselves to add to this dish. So, come with me on this journey and let's see what we can find. Oh, right then, we're down on the spot I want to look at. So we'll go down now, start lifting up some rocks and see what we can find. There you go, look. Little tiny shore crab. Look at this one. He actually, if you, if you touch the top of him, you'll find that he's actually quite soft, which means he hasn't, yeah, softy, he hasn't long molted. And he got a queenie scallop shell, empty, very small. Let's see what's under this big rock here. Oh. Oh, another crab. See him there? It's a standard shore crab. There you go. Male, orange in colour. Hard. If you look at his right claw there, you can see he's been in a bit of a wound with that one. But another two moats or sheds and it'll probably grow back in full again back under his rock a small little rock pool here we look closely we get the net in under under this weed you know see what's there under there oh, two or three prawns there look and keep going. Oh, a lot more prawns, look. There you go, that's what we're after. Some fresh prawns. Put the bucket now, put them in there, and then we'll come back. We've got some nice sized prawns here. Lovely size. There's a weed. We've got a hermit crab. Fascinating little creatures these are. Absolutely fascinating. See them shoot away there then? You can see them living in that, in that shell. Oh, put my hand out, he might come back out now. Yep, there he is. He's moving. Oh, that's away. Now I'll put him back. Probably stay at school. Can he shoot off now? No. Oh, there he is, see? And there he shoots away, look. There you go, you've got some more hermit crabs in there, small ones. See it? There he is, another one. And there's another one there. We'll get these two back as well. And then we've got maybe a good, yeah, good 10, 15 prawns there. That's just one hole. So, exactly what we came for. We'll get them in a bucket and we'll try again. Let's go back and do the same now. We'll try a different bit of the, the pool. We'll put this side now. See if there's anything there. Oh, you can see a few of them darting out. A couple again. Go. 
stones as well in there this time. As you can see, mainly a zebra shell in there and then some small prawns. So again, another little show crab. That's, a, that's, a one, that's one that's ready to peel, that is. He's soft on top. So he's getting ready to peel, shed the skin. It's a common show crab, that is. Get him back in the water. What else have we got in here? This little zebra shell. Try to have a look at what that is when I get home. I haven't come across this before yet. Pretty cool looking thing though. We've got something else in there. A scorpion fish, I think, is it? Let's have a look, shall we? What have we got here? We appear to have a tiny little scorpion fish. Yep. As you can see, look. Absolutely beautiful. Don't get a lot bigger. Probably another inch or two. But if you turn it on its back, look at the colours. Absolutely lovely. It'll just be hugging in the seaweed. That's why it's the colour it is. So we're getting back. Oh, oh there he goes. Shoots away. See what's hiding under the cavities here. There might be the odd blair neo ruby deep enough for them. Yeah, there's one in there now. Get you up to show him in a second. Oh, crab. I think there's an edible. Nope, didn't get him. And then, do you see this? That is a some form of a, a goby or blenny. It's a lovely looking thing. Yeah, that's a blenny. So the the wonderful thing about blennies is that they're all different. Not one fish will be marked the same. They get they can get a little bit bigger than this, but generally they're all slightly different in size. Oh, we're getting straight back in the water now. Come under a rock somewhere here. Yeah. Oh, there you go, shoot out. As you can see here, it's just a mountain of of mussels effectively. Some slightly larger than others. I think we'll go a bit further out, closer to the shore, see if we can find some bigger ones. There are actually thousands of them. And you can see, look, this one here, that's not a rocky outcrop. That's just mussels upon mussels. And they're all attached by their beard, or what's called a byssus. And they, they form their own small ecosystems like you've got here now. So if you ever take a, a mussel, or if you're ever collecting mussels, the last thing you want to do is just take this clump and go. What you're better off doing for the uh, safety of the environment and for these fish and for these um, shellfish is just picking one. So take one from like here, one from here, one from up here, one from up there. If you take that and you take off the byssus, then the population of mussels that are there, they have no way of attaching back and protecting themselves from storms and, and heavy currents and tides. So that's why they always, it's always good to advocate taking small but often from different spots. You can see the serrated edge on this top. So it has a horn. That's where the serratus in the name comes from. It's Latin name. If you drag your finger along its edge, it's smooth. But if you go back the way it's serrated, and that's basically to protect this against other fish. 
So I've just been through a pool behind me now and pulled out some of this seaweed and this. This is pepperdos. You'll find it quite prominently in a lot of these pools and it's edible to eat. It has like a, well basically a peppery taste. It's a nice little condiment to go on top of your dish. If you cook it, the flavour goes. So it's best just eaten raw and just sprinkled on top. And here you are, look. These are more the size we want in terms of mussels. So you want to look for it's a better size there. So just one in every occasional pile. If you see this, an open one, and you tap it and it doesn't close back up, that means it's been dead for some time. If it closes back up, then obviously it's still alive. We'll only grab about 12, maybe 18. Good size. Naturally, the ones closer to shore are much bigger. Good size mussels, look. It's exactly what we want. Oh, right then. So that wasn't a bad haul for an hour and a half's work. We've got a good supply of prawns there and a good handful of mussels to feed us for the evening. So what I'll do now, I'll have to um, tidy up the mussels, so get off the barnacles and such. We'll have to purge them overnight, so by putting them in fresh clean seawater, I'll give them the, the night to uh, get rid of the grit and the sanders in them, and then we'll cook them with risotto. But for now, we'll jump straight across to cooking the risotto. <laughs> Right, fast forward to 24 hours, we're now at home and we're now going to start cooking our risotto. So in terms of the free seafood, we've got our lovely prawns from yesterday, we've got our lovely mussels which have been purged and all the barnacles have been taken off. So they've had overnight to get rid of as much silt as possible. Then we've got our fillet of lovely bass that we caught ourselves. And then in terms of ingredients and what makes up the base, we have got one whole leek, a handful of parsley, two cloves of garlic, some cayenne pepper, some chicken stock, some parmesan, not forgetting a lemon and some risotto rice and a generous knob of unsalted butter. So first of all, we'll get our prep done and then we'll start cooking food. So the first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna take our leek and we're gonna cut it up into small pieces. The leek will form the base of the dish. So we'll cut that into one inch strips Now that that is done, we'll then move on to the garlic. Right then, for the stock, we're going to need 750 millilitres of water. And then what we'll do, our stock will go in there and it'll just whittle down. I'm just going to drizzle a little bit of olive oil Put that on the heat. Right, because our leek is now started to soften, we'll add in a ga some garlic and a generous teaspoon of cayenne pepper. Okay, so garlic, leek, cayenne pepper are in. Next in is the risotto rice. We will cook this until the edges of the risotto become translucent and then that is the point at which you add your stock. So I'll give that a good stir around. Get it right in there. So it's now time to take our ladle of stock and add it in.
I will leave this cook for the best part of about 35 minutes. Just adding stock slowly as we go. All right then, so as the risotto is now cooking, we are gonna focus on the mussels. So as I've said, these have been purged in water overnight in fresh seawater, so they should have gotten most of the grit out of them. Um, I've checked them, they're all still alive, which is great news. So what we'll do is we'll take a big deep pan like this, heat it right up first, then we'll add a little bit of water, pan on top, and then we'll steam them. They should only take about four to five minutes, and then once they're steamed, we'll sieve them out to get rid of any excess um, silt or anything like that, and then they're ready for serving. Okay, that's hot now. So we'll add the mussels in. Give them a little bit of water to steam. And on the pan. So, those will need five minutes to cook now. Once they're done then, we'll set them to the side and then we'll focus on the prawns. Yep, there you go. They are all ready. We now need to, we now need to take them out of pan. I'll have to give them a quick rinse. Make sure any excess salt or grit or anything has come out of them. You can set these aside now for 10 minutes and start to work on the prawns. Right then, that's hotting up now. In with the prawns and the knob of butter. And as you can see, look, they're cooking up almost instantly. A little bit more butter and some garlic. Right, it looks like our, our prawns are ready. And there we are. That's what we foraged yesterday. And I've just finished cooking now. So with five minutes left, it's now time to start on the bass. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cook it, shallow fry it in a very hot frying pan with just some oil. It doesn't need any more of that to start. We'll cook it skin down. And once the skin is crisped up a bit, then we'll turn it round and then we'll add some butter, some parsley and some garlic. So skin side down first. And keep both finger down on it. And then once you see the edges begin to whiten a little bit, that's when you know it's time to turn it around. There you go. We'll add the rest of our butter. We'll turn the lid right down. And then to finish it off, we'll just add Squeeze the lemon in. Give it a bit of flavour. There's the meaning garlic. Just a little bit of parsley. Take this off. We'll now take it off the heat. We'll add another knob of butter and our parmesan and parsley. And then just our parsley goes in. Right then, taking all of the mussels and about a third of the prawns, we've mixed them into the mix, into the risotto itself. So there's our risotto, 
We're going to fill it a bass and we'll position it on top. Just finish it off. A few prawns. All oh, right then, so from sea to dinner plate, this is what we've got. Let's give it a try. Mm. Very nice, if I do say so myself. Well, I hope you enjoyed joining me on this fishing and foraging journey. If you would like to see more videos like this, please don't forget to press the red subscribe button. My name is Reese. thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next video.